Hey, Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla, and I get this question a lot about our surface imperfection maps that we have in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. People aren't really sure where to put them, what's the best practice, what's the best way to use these things. So I went ahead and made a video showing my favorite ways of using surface imperfection maps in Octane. So let's check it out. All right, so surface imperfection maps in Octane. So if you're not familiar with Grayscale Gorilla Plus, we have a ton of materials, textures, and HDRIs, plugins, training, all sorts of stuff. But what we're gonna be talking today is surface imperfection maps. And of course, we have a huge selection of those right here in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Lots of cool stuff in here. So let's just grab one of these and bring it into our Octane material here. And what they usually are, are gonna be tileable black and white images used to make things look less perfect. Hence the name, surface imperfection maps. So right now, I'm gonna be using ours, but you can go ahead and follow along at home with your own, or if you're a member, obviously you can use the ones that we provide. So Usually in Octane, I'm going to be taking surface imperfection maps and using them in many, many different ways. And I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite uses for them here in a minute. But typically, I'm going to be piping them directly into an Octane gradient. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I need a visual way to manipulate that gradient, remap the values, and you know, just kind of make it look the way that I need it to look. And the reason a gradient works really well for that is it's very visual and interactive with the live viewer. So can see here we can clamp the blacks down on this texture we can clamp the whites in i can grab this texture and maybe grab a uv transform and scale it down a little bit get a little bit more detail in there and maybe we want to even invert this gradient to kind of get a completely different look so a gradient is going to allow us to change how these black to white values are mapped and we can also remap the values themselves you can see i inverted it here we can just bring this back to more of a default state we could bring that black down to maybe 50%. Maybe we want to make a really subtle sort of grunge look, something like that. So typically, though, I'm using a gradient. In other renders, I might use a change range. But for Octane, I'm almost always using a gradient. All right, so we've dragged in one of our surface imperfection maps from the Plus library. And I have them all connected already just to save time in these other materials here. So let's just kind of walk through the uses. The most common use that I use these for are gonna be roughness. And you can see we've got one of our, our Grayscale Gorilla Plus smudge maps in here for that one. Let me go ahead and make that material active. So this smudge map here is great because it kind of makes it look like somebody's smeared some greasy stuff all over this material. And I'm using that into a gradient again to control that surface, that roughness. And this is gonna be going directly into an Octane universal material in the roughness channel. Now, if we default this back, this gradient back to its default uh, state, which is gonna be this, it's gonna be way too rough. Our values are kind of like all over, uh, just very, very white. And you can also mess around with the gamma too. So another thing that you could do if you wanted to like, you know, change the look is you could uh, use a linear gamma uh, of one, or you can use uh, a 2.2 sRGB gamma, whatever works, you know, it's, it, there's no real rules to this. Typically you would use linear, but sometimes I find that I can get a, a cool look if I use a, a non-linear. Uh, okay, so this gradient, let's go ahead and remap these values to something a little bit more appropriate because right now a one is just way too rough on our surface. So let's grab that gradient, grab the white, and maybe bring it down a little bit till it looks kind of like this. And then we're gonna take our black and kind of clamp it a little bit so we can see a little bit of that shininess and then the smeared parts right there. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe we wanna bring that black value up so it's not completely clean. And something like this is feeling pretty good, maybe a little bit darker. Yeah, so using it subtly, they can go a long way if you just kind of use them very subtly in roughness. And of course you could, you know, use other ones. It doesn't have to be our smudge maps. We've got, you know, crust and all sorts of stuff in here that you could try out. Okay, so the next material uh, I'm gonna throw in here is gonna be using it in a bump channel. So you can see we've got our same smudges happening in the roughness, but down here, I've duplicated it and I've grabbed one of our crust maps and I've put it into a gradient that kind of clamps the black at 50% and pushes down the whites below 50% to kind of create this look of like pitted, almost like a pitted material. If we reset this gradient back to default, it's very, very rough because obviously this bump map, we don't have any sort of control over the intensity. We're doing it all within this gradient. So let me just bring these values closer to the 50%, 50% being kind of our our, our water level, if you will. And let's just kind of bring that down. And now we're getting more of like a, a, a general roughness over the surface. And of course we could clamp that value in to make it look like it's got some little areas sticking out from the surface. But if we want to make it look like that pitted look again, 
we want that white value to actually push down into the surface, so a, a value lower than 50%. And then this black value, I'm going to change to 50%, and we're just going to clamp it down a little bit. And now we've got like a pitted look in this bump. So another, re another way you could use surface imperfections is to actually mask out a decal or a texture of some kind. So here we have a sticker, uh, our octane sticker decal happening here. And I'm using an OSL material or an OSL texture uh, that emulates kind of a Photoshop layer set with transfer modes and whatnot. And this is uh, in the newer versions of, of Octane. I believe it's one of their OSL presets. But imagine this is just kind of like Photoshop. So I've taken this PNG of this, of this texture of the, uh, of the logo, and I split out the alpha, and I'm multiplying that against another uh, grunge map, another surface imperfection map from our crust collection. And just multiplying that out of on top of our mat of our of our texture, so that's going to become the new mat for this for this little decal. And that's going to make it look like it's worn away. Maybe it's gotten uh, it got you know bumped up against some stuff and it's sort of like rubbing off or something. So again, we're using it now to reveal a different texture, and in this case, we're cutting through a decal. We're using a roughness still, and we've still got our bump happening here. So. We're kind of seeing all these different ways we can layer these things up and use them in different ways to create interesting looks. Okay, so the next one that I'm going to show you is going to be another one, but this one is taking it a little bit further. We're using that same technique where we're masking out that decal, but you can see we've got some scratches here and we've got some metal underneath, and we're doing that with a composite or layered material that is going to allow us to take our, our painted material that we had before. Let's go ahead and solo that and combine that with a iron metal material and use our textures here. This, in our case, we're gonna be using the scratch to reveal that metal underneath. So if I kind of come over here and I disable that and we look at this, you can see we've got some scratches happening. So this kind of looks like a painted metal has been scratched away and it's kind of a cool look. But yeah, it's, it's just another way to kind of use it. So now in this one, we're using it to uh, mask out a decal. We're using it in roughness. We're using it in bump. And now we're using it to reveal a completely different material. So this last one kind of takes all of these things, combines them, and adds a little bit of dirt at the end. So if we look at this one, at this particular combo, we've got our same exact thing. But now we've added yet another layer of crust using one of, our, uh, one of the images from our crust collection here. And we're using that to drive this dirt material. So if I look at the solo node here, you can see we've just got like a really dark kind of flat material. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to give that dirt look on top of everything. It's very subtle. If I change this gradient again, this is going into a gradient for that control that we talked about. And if I raise up this, uh, this white value, it's going to make that more opaque. It's probably a bit too much, but now you can see that dirt on top. So now we're kind of using a bunch of different techniques and a bunch of different surface imperfection maps. So again, we've got one going into this decal. We've got another one that's revealing and bumping out this painted material. And then we've got another one that's revealing uh, the scratches that we've got a great set of scratches, by the way, if you haven't checked them out, like got a ton of really cool surface imperfection scratches. And that's revealing this metal material. So we're using a ton of different surface imperfection maps in different ways to kind of layer up and create that grunge and create that surface imperfection look. And, and it's relatively uh, intuitive and very kind of fun to kind of play around here and mess around with these gradients and get what you need. Again, if you haven't checked out uh, Grayscale Gorilla Plus, where we've got like tons of surface imperfections, uh, tons of octane materials, we've got uh, HDRIs, we've got all kinds of stuff over in Grayscale Gorilla Plus, including plugins and training. So if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. If you liked the video, got something out of it, give us a thumbs up. And if you wanna learn more about our surface imperfection maps over on Grayscale Gorilla Plus, there's a link down below in the description. I highly recommend checking out. We've got tons of awesome stuff. We've got plugins, materials, textures, surface imperfection maps, training. We've got everything over in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So go check it out. And until next time, I'll see you around.